Throughout the rest of the semester, we are going to be covering a variety of different topics in computer science. And I would be inclined to say a variety of different career fields in computer science. Hopefully by the time you're done with this, um, this course, you'll be able to say to yourself, I really enjoyed that topic. I hated that topic. This one was okay, but man, I loved this topic. And maybe you'll find a career field or something that you're interested in and would like to explore more throughout the rest of your time as a student in the computer science department. And so one of the assignments that we're going to be doing quite frequently through the rest of the semester is to be searching for current active local jobs in a variety of different career fields so that you can find out, first of all, if there are any jobs available in that career field, and second of all, how much money that you can make doing it. It's always sad when I find a a student with a PhD in social work who was $200,000 in debt and they're making $20,000 a year. And I always ask him, didn't you know when you first started your degree, your PhD in social work, that social workers only make 20 grand a year? Did you not know that? And so I don't want you to be able to say that later when you get your degree in computer science that you didn't know how much money on average you could make in your chosen career field. So that is the whole point of this assignment. And so in the chapter two homework assignment, you're going to notice that the second part is to find some jobs. Each time we do this activity, you're going to find three current active local jobs. And there is a link to a template that you can fill out because there's specific information I want to know about each job. And when you open up that template, it's going to show you a little bit of a spreadsheet format with eight different things that I would like to know about each one of the jobs that you find. Um, you can copy and paste the information from the job listings. You don't have to type it in by hand. So obviously the first thing I want to know is the title of the job and again, employers can call their jobs anything they want to. So the second one is the, the important part, the duties or the responsibilities. It's going to be important that you are searching for relevant jobs, relevant to the topic that we're researching for the week. And so this duties um, cell is where you're going to show me all the responsibilities of the job. And it's important that those duties are proving that it is related to the topic that we are researching. Make sure that you copy and paste in information from the job listing that proves to me that it is related. The next thing I need to know is the location. And that is the location anywhere from within commuting distance, let's say from Lehigh to Logan. And so this is commuting in a vehicle, not a small engine aircraft. That means that it has to be somewhere that's not St. George or Las Vegas or California, but somewhere that you are willing to commute to. All right, so we'll say Lehigh to, how about the Idaho border or the Wyoming border, all right, if you're on a, in a fast car. The next thing that I want to know, number five, is the education required to be hired. If they list a high school degree, diploma or an associate's degree or a bachelor's degree or even that PhD in social work, then I'm going to have you list that. Now, not all employers include that information, and so if they don't, it's okay to leave that one blank. The next one as well is the year's experience. If they say they want you to have five years experience as a forensic scientist or ten years as a network admin, then you would include that information here. And the, the uh, sixth one is certifications. If they require industry certifications like a Security Plus certification or a Net Plus certification, you would include that information here as well. And those last three are optional because not all employers will include that information. But the seventh one is not optional, wage or salary information. The whole point of doing this activity is so you can decide how much money you could make by going into this career field. And so at least one of the three jobs must have salary information listed. That can be 20 bucks an hour or 100,000 a year. It could be a government scale of like a GS-12 or a WG-10. I think the University of Utah has a level one, level two, and level three employee pay scale. Whatever um, pay scale is shown on the employer listing, you would include that here. Now, just one of the three has to have salary information, and it has to be embedded in the job listing. It cannot be a ticker below the job listing that says, based upon your geographical location and the title of this job, we calculate the mean, the average, um, and the max to be. That is not acceptable salary information. It has to be inherent in the job itself. And then the last one is the URL. You can copy and paste. You can go up into your browser and copy and paste the URL directly into that cell. 
so that if I choose to go find that job again, which I will be checking your jobs, um, when I check it, it will take me back to that listing. All right, so at the bottom of the document is several reasons why you wouldn't receive credit. Um, the first one is why you won't receive credit for an individual job listing. First of all, if it's not related to the topic that we're researching. Chapter two is all about computer security. If you give me a job as a game developer, then you will not get credit for that job listing. If you give me a job um, in Las Vegas, Nevada, you will not get credit for that job listing. And the last one is if you don't include the URL. I need to be able to check the job to make sure that it is indeed real and that you're not just making stuff up. There are a variety of reasons why you would not receive credit on any of the job listings. And the first and most important reason is that none of the jobs have any salary information or the salary information that you have provided is not inherently a part of the job listing, but is instead an industry average. Another one is that the only job listing that has salary information is not related to the topic that we are currently researching. So if you have three job listings and the only one with salary information is the uh, Java developer or the game developer, then you won't receive credit for any of the job listings, that portion of the homework assignment. So as I said before, we're going to be doing this frequently throughout the rest of the semester. So let me know if you have any questions.